Hello guys and welcome to Daily Dose of CAD. This is a first episode of a series that I'm going to start doing uh, to give you guys some CAD uh, engineering tutorials and outline uh, tips and tricks that I find along the way. Uh, so in this episode of the Daily Dose of CAD, I'm going to outline how to do a uh, snap fit case in Fusion 360. It's a feature that I really liked using for plastic uh, design in SolidWorks. Uh, but Fusion 360 lacks that, and I really like Fusion 360 as a software, so this is how I do it. Let's get to All it. All right, how are we doing, guys? Uh, my name's Adam James, and in this video of the Daily Dose of CAD, I'm going to go over um, snap fit designs and how I typically do it in Fusion 360. Uh, like I said, it's a feature that I typically uh, like in SolidWorks, but there's a lack of it in Fusion 360. So, um, you know, with correct tolerances, um, we'll get to kind of showing how I do it and how you'll be able to implement it into your designs. So this is an example of how I um, have worked it into one of my designs um, and just thought it's kind of a useful tool that you can add to your toolbox. So let's do an example. So here's a little shelled out box that I made. Um, so I'm just going to try to outline as quickly as I can kind of um, the basics of, of how I create this um, in its simplest form. So what I'll do, actually I don't want an analysis on that side. I want, yes I do, okay. I'll create a sketch on this face here do L for construction line, bring it up here a little bit, click this, press X for construction, R for rectangle, and we'll just make a rectangle. And we'll make it symmetric by going down here to symmetry, choosing both of these and this to make it symmetric about that axis, and boom. Um, we'll press D for dimension, oh, and I'm out of the sketch, so we'll right click and we'll edit the sketch. We'll press D for dimension and we'll make this line here with uh, maybe six millimeters. And we'll make this width uh, 40. Great. That'll work for the purpose of this video. So we'll click on this sketch that we just made. All right, you can see it's selected down here in the timeline. And we'll extrude it and the difference between a normal extrusion and the extrusion that I'm going to be using uh, for the purpose of this feature is we're going to add a taper angle of negative 45 degrees. Now negative 45 degree taper angle is going to allow um, the 3D printer to be able to uh, step up really nicely uh, and it's going to be 3D printed really nice. Typically I would use PLA for this um, but that's just because PLA is really easy to print with. So we will select the feature that we just made and we'll turn the analysis off and then we will make a mirror, create a mirror over, select the mirror plane and for my situation it'll be the front plane and I'll just go over, you can kind of see it in gray there. And there it is, cool. So now we've got, I guess the uh, hook um, for kind of that snap fit. And now what we're gonna wanna do is create a lid um, to go in this and snap in. So I'll go ahead and make a new component and I'll rename it lid. We'll create a new sketch under the lid component when it's activated right here. Just click on this kind of edge, do sketch, and I'm lazy so I don't want to redraw these again. Great, looking good. And then we'll just extrude it up, select this, control, select this. 
we'll just extrude it up maybe five millimeters or so. Great. Okay. Now let's hide the body with the lid still uh, activated. And then we'll do a sketch on the bottom of the lid. So we're in the sketch on the bottom side of the lid. Now let's uh, show the body, hide the lid. And then we'll do P for project. And we'll just select these so that we don't have to redraw it again. Maybe I already select that one. Yeah, we'll see. That should be okay. How's that look? Pretty good. Hide the body, show the lid, and then we're back on the bottom plane. And then with the line L, we'll just connect these nicely. Everything's already defined by the other sketches, so we don't need to do anything else. But what we are going to do is we're going to create an offset. Uh, it's in sketch, sorry. Offset, we're going to offset all of these projections and the lines I just created inward by negative 0.5 millimeters. Now I'm doing it uh, by 0.5 millimeters because uh, typically 0.5 millimeters when I print with PLA is a good uh, tolerance. Uh, and turns out really well. So we'll just do 0.5 between the clearance or or for the clearance between the lid and the body. Cool. And just so you can kind of see what I mean. Um, this outer line here is the inside shell of the body. And then this line here is the inside of the lid that will be going um, into it. So it just gives it that little bit of clearance so that it can slide right down into it. So we'll stop the sketch, we'll hide the body, and we'll click on the sketch that we just made, and we'll extrude it out um, six millimeters. And I got six millimeters because if you show the body again, let's actually activate the body. You can see that di this distance from the top to the bottom is indeed six millimeters. So we want it to be that length and depth when we extrude it. And maybe if we turn our analysis on, the other analysis, oh, I don't have another analysis. We'll do this one. There we go. So you can see what's going on here. We've got a little bit of tolerance between these, but now there's some intersection between the lid portion and the outer shell. So what I'm going to do um, is we're going to turn the analysis off. We're going to go ahead and activate the lid again. And because we have that uh, conflict between this kind of extruded chamfer here, we need to make an extruded chamfered cut for it to snap into. So the easiest way that I do that is I'll hide, oh, excuse me, I'll hide the lid. I'll show the lid and I'll create a sketch on the same side that we want uh, that sketch for the, the chamfered cut to be on. So I'll create a sketch. Once we have the sketch created, <clears throat> we can show the body, hide the lid, and then we can project again. And we'll just project these lines of that chamfered extrusion. And what that's going to do is you'll be able to see this in a little bit. This is going to extrude those onto the surface of where we want that feature to go. So you can see now these lines which we made the extruded cut on are now on this plane. So let's hide the body again. We'll go to the back plane and 
We're actually done here. So we'll stop the sketch. We'll click on this sketch again. We'll extrude, extrude it inward for a cut. And we're going to do, oop, we're going to do negative 45 degrees. So that looks well. Uh, and then I'll do, go to modify, click on chamfer, and we'll just bring this in one millimeter or so. And I'll show you why I did that uh, in just a second. So click on the chamfer, click on the extruded uh, chamfered cut, and then go to create mirror. And then we will mirror it over. For my case, it'll be the back plane. Or the, excuse me, the XY plane. <laughs> okay, looking good. So let's see where we're at now. Let's bring the analysis in. So it looks pretty good. We've got a little bit of tolerance here. We've got uh, this extrusion, or excuse me, this chamfer here. But I think what it's missing is, uh, oh, we still need to shell it. So let's hide the body. Let's turn the analysis off, and we're just going to shell this. So I always do the shell last because um, it allows you to um, go around this feature as well. So that looks pretty good. Let's see what we're working with now. Turn. Let's just activate everything, turn the analysis on, and go right here. For some reason, it shelled the inner wall here, which I didn't necessarily want to do. But I guess to fix that, what I can do is I can make the upper. Let's activate the lid here. I can make the initial extrusion upward, maybe four millimeters or so. And then it shouldn't do it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Cool. That is it, guys. Um, oh, and I was going to say, this little chamfer here is just so that... Maybe I can bring it down. As you can see, when it comes down, it's going to kind of hit that. It's going to slide. And then it's going to come down and snap fit into that. So, really helpful for this kind of feature or, or this uh, tool, another tool in your toolbox. And because we shelled it, now it can flex inward, uh, depending on what material you use, of course. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.